Hey guys and gals, it's Thomas from the Booze and BJJ podcast. I am actually going to have new alcohol this weekend, so I can actually drink again with you guys during the live stream. Now, uh, I've only recently been cleared to drink by my doctor. Actually, it's been about two months, I think, but uh, I was being cautious because I didn't want my medication to... um, have any adverse effects because well one of the things it says is not to drink with uh not to take with alcohol now um while we're having this little chat today oh that's a, that's that double leg always looks good um I'm gonna watch that again so while we're having this chat today um in our one of my videos comment sections um i a question was posed, and that question was, it, it went something along the lines of, does uh, jiu-jitsu remain fun after the first year? Something like that. Something akin to that. And I just wanted to answer that question. Whew, I got rocked during practice earlier today, but earlier tonight. But anyways, um, so I wanted to answer that question. And I will say this. Does jiu-jitsu remain fun after a year? Yes, and also no. Um, honestly, it depends on what you want out of it. So if you're happy competing, learning techniques, um, if you just enjoy the atmosphere of it, and that's really all your, all your expectations. Oh, that looks, that looks nasty. Sorry. And that's really all your expectations of what jujitsu is, is going to be. And yes, you're going to enjoy it from point A to point B. You know, of course, there's exceptions to the rule. There's going to be um, there's going to be nice of training that you don't enjoy. There's going to be training partners you don't enjoy. Uh, things aren't always going to go right. Everything isn't going to go 100. percent And as long as you keep that in mind, you'll be fine. Um, with that being said, uh, in my opinion, there's a holy tri- uh, a holy trinity of jujitsu when it comes to enjoyment of it. Um, if you're happy competing, if you're happy learning new techniques and, and this is a big and you have good training partners, then you will be happy and you're, you'll be good to go. All right. Now there's also what I call a holy duo of jujitsu, which is for the folks that don't necessarily care for com- competition they just want to practice it. And in that case, as long as you have um, a good training partner, good set of training partners, I'm going to watch this again, and you enjoy just learning the techniques of the art, and there's a lot, then again, you'll be fine. You know, you just have to keep those expectations. Um, if you're expecting to just walk into a gym, whether it be your home gym, an affiliate gym, a gym you're visiting, and you're just expecting to dominate everybody that you find, that's unrealistic. Um, no matter how good you are, there's always someone else that's um, basically going to punch your ticket. Like There's always going to be someone who, either through skill or sheer athleticism, is just going to give you a really hard time. And they may end up submitting you, and they may end up passing your guard, and they may end up getting a takedown on you, and just, that's just the name of the game, and that's how it goes. So, you know, you just have to keep that in mind. You know, that's the nature of the beast. Now, belt chasing is always an avenue of not enjoying the art. So, if you're practicing jujitsu and you do, you know, the holy trinity of enjoyment is, is set. Let's go with that. But you're also chasing a chasing the next belt, you know, promotion after promotion along the way. You're either going to get burnt out, disappointed, or you may even quit. Everybody I know that belt chased ended up quitting after blue belt. So, you know, again, in the long run, does the belt matter? Yes, but also no. But that is a topic for another video. But, um, and you know, like just to reiterate, you know, be reasonable with your expectations. And I'll give you a story of what happened earlier tonight. So 
uh, I'm a little bit injured, and I'm also a middle-aged man. I'm also a middle-aged man that sits at a desk 90% of the day. Well, 90% of the work day, rather. Now, I showed up to class today with, um, I actually burned my left thigh cooking earlier this week. And I thought it was okay. It's, you know, not a bad burn. It's just painful and annoying. But I thought I was good enough to roll. And rolling for the first portion, first portion of class, or rather, the portion of class where we started rolling, I was good until about the last 10 minutes when we started shark tanking. And then, um, you know, uh, Master Hughie called the brown belts out. We were all on the, on the mat, and he called out one of the other senior belts. And first, my first round, my first go at it was this young gentleman named Chungun. And I call him little brother because he's 19 years old. Not only is he 19 years old, but he's one of the most athletic 19-year-olds 19 year old, 19 I've ever met. And he's also six foot four. Um, now, because I'm an older guy and because, you know, outside of class, I don't really have a lot of time to work out a lot except for maybe lifting weights once a week. When you encounter somebody who's super athletic like Chingun and just strong, tall, you know, and people six foot tall always give me a problem anyways. But when you when you're when you match up somebody like that, it doesn't matter if they're a brown belt, there is a big chance that you're just going to get overpowered you know their athleticism is going to be hard to keep up with they're super fast or super strong their technique really isn't there but you had you know i got my guard passed and i was fine with that because you know this kid is 20 plus years younger than me i'm old enough to be his father and I don't, again, I don't have enough time to really work out outside of work and training at the gym and teaching at the gym and then my own family. Now, with that all being said, did I get upset? No. Did other people who were watching, you know, think that that was odd? Yes. Now, most of the people who thought it was odd don't realize the, the huge age difference between us. And they haven't been grappling long enough to understand that that is going to be a very difficult matchup on part of the older guy, i.e. me, you know. So, yeah. I don't care, you know. He's a white belt. I'm a brown belt. You know, he's 6'4", I'm 5'8", he's 19, I'm <laughs> over 20 years older than him. It's just the way it goes. You know, you have to have that expectation, This, especially if you're an older practitioner. There's going to be younger practitioners of lower belt rankings that are just going to have your ticket punched. You know, especially if you don't have a lot of time to, you know, do any kind of extra workouts. You know, just, just long story short, in order to maintain, just to summarize, in order to maintain the enjoyment of the sport, you have to be happy with the learning aspect of it. You have to have good training partners. You have to temper expectations. You know, if you're a, a hobbyist white belt who's probably average size, you can't expect to go up against a highly competitive upper belt who may or may not be several decades younger than you. You know, it's just, that's the way it is. It's the nature of the beast. And as soon as you accept that about jujitsu, it's also applicable to other combat sports. It's also applicable to boxing, Muay Thai, etc. As long as you keep that in mind, you will be good. And you will be happy. And you will enjoy the sport. And I totally just zoned out and wasn't watching this video for the last couple of minutes. Oh, my God. All right, I'm going to bed. I'll talk to you all later.